Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the highly respected head coach of the Kahuku football team. He is Coach Sterling Carvalho. And today we are going beyond state championships. Hey, Coach Sterling, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Rusty Coach. Thank you for having me on this show. It's a privilege um, to be here and Obviously, it's a privilege to even be talking with you and had a conversation prior. Um, your resume speaks for itself. And all us coaches, we wish we could have 22 consecutive state titles. So it's great to be on this show and it's great to know you as a coach. Well, Coach Sterling, I, it's my privilege and honor to really know you. And you've been creating such an incredible culture of excellence with your team. But before we talk about that, can you share about where you grew up at and what schools you attended? Well, I, I grew up on the island of Kauai, born and raised on, on that island, attended Kauai High School. Um, I'm a Red Raider, so literally I can say I'm a Red Raider for life currently. Um, after I graduated high school, I, I came to BYU Hawaii out here on the North Shore of, of Oahu. But during that time, I also took a two-year break and I served uh, a mission for my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I went to upstate New York, primarily in the cities of Buffalo, Rochester, Niagara, Palmyra. And I was able to, um, to learn the language of Spanish, right? So I spoke Spanish for a couple of years, taught the gospel uh, for two years in a Spanish language. So like I said, I'm very fortunate to have gained a second language. And then I returned back from my mission and graduated with my bachelor's of science in math education at Brigham Young University of Hawaii. And then I went on to the University of Hawaii at Manoa and got my master's in education administration for higher education. Um, after that, I also got a, I continued on and got more studies to help me in my education. And so I'm just grateful that I was able to have the means and the desire and the health and strength to, to further my education and continue in that course. Wow, that's great to hear. And coach, what kind of uh, various coaching jobs did you have before becoming head coach at Kahuku? Well, well, uh, my last year of, of my bachelor's, I did my student teaching at Waialua High School under Dennis Katayama. So when I was done teaching and, and graduated, he moved to become the registrar. And so the school really liked me when I was doing my internship there. And they says, you know, Sterling, this job is yours. You want to step right in? And I, I was grateful. Like, great, I'll do it. I don't have to go through the whole interview process. I love it out on the North Shore. I loved Wailua because it reminded me of, of Kauai, right? A plantation type of community, hardworking folks, humble students. So I, I started there. And when I started teaching, um, Chico Capello was the head coach of Waialua at that time. So he brought me on as a defensive coordinator. So I actually started on a defensive side of the ball. And then he retired. So I was very fortunate to also coach under Lincoln Barrett. So Lincoln Barrett there at Waialua, and I became an offensive coordinator there as well. So I was there for about five years at Waialua High School as an offensive and a defensive coordinator. And that was probably one of the best things that, that ever happened to me because we, we lost more than we won. And you had to be creative. You didn't have the numbers. Um, you had a lot of raw players at that time. So it helped me become a creative player, um, thinking more than just the X's and O's and, and helping players within that community, not only succeed in football, but in school and, and their personal life. So I, I was very fortunate to start at Waialua. Then in 2006, Coach Reggie Torres became the head coach at Kahuku High School. And so he brought me on board at that time to first be a running backs coach. And then during that same year, I became a running backs coach. The offensive coordinator had a new job at OCCC 
um, now the head coach at Campbell, Darren Johnson. So I was a co-offensive coordinator with Coach Reggie at that time. And ever since that became the offensive coordinator for Kahuku all the way up to 2013. Um, no, 2015. Then I became the JV head coach at that time. Because I was going to be done with, with um, football and just coach golf at Kahuku. Um, but one week prior to the uh, start of the season at that time, the JV staff, you know, walked away. And so my athletic director called me and she said, Sterling, I need you to put a staff together in a week and be ready for the first game. And so I was very fortunate that a lot of people here want to coach football here at Kahuku. So I put together our staff and for the next three years, we were very successful at the JV level. And then finally, you know, the job opened up at Kahuku to be the varsity head coach. I applied. The reason why I applied is it's always about the players. You know, I had those players who I coached during the JV. So it was an e easy transition. And at that time, there's a lot of turnover rate of coaches coming in for a year or two and then leaving. So I just wanted stability, not just for our players, but for our community. And so I've been the head coach ever since going on to my fourth year. Um, some people say the fifth year, but I don't count the COVID year. So moving on to my fourth year coaching here at Coco. Well, it's amazing hearing your journey to where you are now and the impact that you're making, not just on the players, but on the community. And Coach Sterling, how would you describe your coaching style? Well, I'm a, I like to say I'm a really hands-on coach. Right? I, I live with the players. I run with the players. Um, if I need them to show them a pattern, I'll get out there and run it um, because I, I really, if I demand a lot from my players, I demand a lot for myself, not just coaching them and, and yelling, but also showing them and, and just rolling up my sleeves and getting dirty with them. So I'm, I'm a very hands-on type of coach and, and I like to lead by example. No, oh, I love hearing that too. And You've definitely created a culture of excellence. I mean, I would say a superior culture of excellence with your Kahuku team. And can you tell me about what that culture looks like? Well, when I became the head coach, I, I built my program on three pillars, right? Education, character, and football. Because Rusty coach, you know, as, as a high school coach, the first thing a lot of these college coaches come in and ask about a certain player is how is their education? What's their grade point average? So I needed to make sure my students and players understood that, that education is actually first and foremost for you to be successful in the next level. So I really make sure that education is a big part of our program. And then the character. Second thing a lot of college coaches ask is how's the character of this player? Is he a team player, right? So I want to make sure that our players are successful, not just on the field, but off the field. You know, by default, they're mentors here at Kohuku. They're idols. When, when we go to camps and a lot of these people ask, oh, who's your favorite player? A lot of kids from our community, they don't talk about NFL players or college players. They say, oh, the Car -Car Kai Kai Carvalho, right? They say the Afanga Wileys. So they see all our Kohuku players before. So... We want to make sure my standard is built upon that education and character. And obviously, football. It comes natural to a lot of our players here on our team. So that is how my pillars and my program is run. I love hearing your pillars, Coach. And you've obviously had, had a, a lot of success already. I mean, winning state championships. Now, why, why are you a successful coach? Well, I'm a successful coach because I'm very fortunate to have great athletes, parents, and a community, right? Um, a lot of people think that we have big, mean boys, right? Players, but they're actually great listeners. They're actually great sons. They actually are great brothers. And so when we tell them to do something, it's, yes coach right and when we ask the parents things they says yes coach so they trust the process so i'm very fortunate to be successful because whatever i demand of my players they're respectful in a way in which everything is yes coach i'll do that 
And case in point, my quarterback last year, I mean, we really changed the culture of Oku football, not just from a primarily dominant running team, but now to be a, a passing team in which we can take advantage of what defensive gives us. And every time I got on to my quarterback, he says, coach, I got you. Coach, I got you. And, and that's why I'm so successful because I have players that are respectful to that degree. Coach, I got you. And that's Jason Maratarangi, who was one of my captains last year as a quarterback. Oh, I love hearing that. I, I love hearing your insights, Coach Sterling. And I want to ask you about this. I, I know that when you guys play a, a lot of games and you have the game under control, you'll put in your second string and your third string. And the other coach knows what you're doing. And But, you know, sometimes the public might only see the final score. And let's say the final score is 76 to 7. And they're thinking, whoa, how come this team is just blowing out, running up the score? But it's not the case, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, coach, you, you just put it there. You know, we, we beat Barrington last year, 75 to 6. And, and actually, some of my starters only played the first quarter. What a lot of people don't realize is my second and thirds, they go against the ones every single day. They go against the best defense. They compete against the best offense. So when it's their turn to play, they're just doing what they've been practicing to go against the best and executing at the highest level. You know, we, we always have this, that iron sharpens iron. So when they have their chance, they go out there and they execute just as much as our starters do. So it's very unfortunate. I mean, last year I, I talked to both Coach Sanchez and um, Coach at Lelehua. And at halftime, I says, Coach, I'm not trying to run up the score. I respect you. I respect you, Coach Mark at, at Lelehua, your programs, all that you stand for. And trust me, I'm not trying to run up the score. I, I cannot go any deeper into my bench. But my players will just continue to play hard. And, you know, I, I, I met Coach Mark at the start of our OIA meeting this year. And the first thing he did is shake my hand and says, Coach, I appreciate you um, for, for your humility and, and things like that. I, I never try to insult or disrespect any coach in any way or any program or any player. But I just want to make sure that my players are prepared week in and week out from the top to the bottom. We treat every player with respect on our program and we coach every player like they're the starter. And so when it's their opportunity to play, perform and and that's all we can ask of them yeah and i i want people to really understand this because like even for me as a coach i i'm training my players to play their hardest and toughest from the first point all the way to match point i want their switch to stay on where they're giving a hundred percent effort all the time not not a switch that you turn off and on and so that's how we're trying to train our players and your guys, I mean, if your first string's only playing one quarter, I mean, they're they're practicing so much. They want to play in the games, but when that second string comes in, they're practicing just as much as the first string, and so is the third string. And when they get in, they that's their time to play, and they want to score, right? Exactly. You know, we we coach our players to play to their potential, right? Regardless of who we are playing whether we're playing Farrington or St. Louis or Mililani or Waianae, we, we always tell our boys to play to their potential. And so as we ingrain that within their minds and they compete week in and week out, practice week in and week out, when it comes game time, they're doing that. They're playing to the best of their abilities. Yeah, and you know, for me too, coach, I just want to add this, that oftentimes when we would play smaller schools, I'm playing my weakest lineup against them. And the other coaches are, you know, thanking me for that. And like how the coaches are thanking you for putting in your second and third string players. But, you know, we know that a high tide raises all boats. I mean, we want to make sure that our teams can be the best that they can be so that potentially we can compete against the national teams, right? Exactly. And, and you know, Coach, that's why this year we're very fortunate to be playing national powerhouses in St. John Bosco, who came out as the preseason number one team in the nation, and also St. Francis from Maryland, 
um, that there came in at preseason number three. So we want to make sure that we're not just playing to the best of our abilities, but also playing the best that is out there. And so as a public school, we don't have the luxury of, oh, we're losing these players. Let's go and recruit these others. We're, we just have who we have year in and year out. And right now, like you said, coach, we're, we're at that high tide, our potential of our players that is the all time high. So we have to take advantage of, of this team to see where we stack up against the nation's best in St. John Bosco and St. Francis. Well, Coach Sterling, I, I really enjoyed meeting with you last week and you have both of my books and Ryan Tanaka, the owner of Giovanni Pastrami restaurant in Waikiki, he's going to be doing a book donation to your entire team next week. And I want to know what, what are some things that stood out to you in the books? You know, coach, as, as you know, we're in this profession, not because of the money, especially at the high school level. We're here because we love the sports, but most importantly, we love the student athletes that we coach. And so one thing that really stood out in my mind is um, like how you mentioned, like a boss cares only about the work, but a leader cares about the people. And, you know, as, as head coaches, yes, by default, we are the leaders of that team. And my perspective is and always will be about our players, the people. And, you know, that, that's what I thought of. And that's why I applied for the job. Not because I want to be the famous Kahuku head coach, but because I want to be there for the players on and off the field, whether they need a meal, whether they need tutoring in math or in Spanish. I, I just want to be there for them. And so that's why I loved about um, your analogy on that and, and your statement that I'm not, I'm not a boss. I'm, I'm a leader. And I'm a leader for my student athletes. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And you also like that Snoopy quote in there, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it, about winning until you lose, right? No one cares about winning until you lose. So I really like that, that you had that on your wall. I actually Googled that and um, screenshot it. And that's one thing I'm going to be sharing with my team because, you know, we out here training hard. We've been training almost year round, our players, right? And if people tell you that it doesn't matter, winning or losing, you know, I'll think twice, especially to our players, that it does matter. Yeah, no, the Snoopy quote, right? Um, it doesn't matter if you win or lose until mm -hmm. you lose. And exactly. that's so true because you and I, I mean, I think for us, winning is fine. But I think you and I really just hate losing. And, yes. and if we win, it's like, oh, yeah, we won. But we just hate losing. Is that true with you too? Yeah, I, I just hate losing because I feel like if we lose, I myself take it personally. I didn't prepare my players. I put them in a situation in which they failed. And, and that's one why I hate losing because I hate to see my players fail or feel like they failed, that they let me down as a coach or let their family down as sons. And so it's not just losing, but it's, it's seeing them go to that. And as much as I don't like it, I don't like putting them in that position. So that's why losing, you know, I hate, you know, I, I don't like it. No, oh, and that, that's why you're a great coach. Like you said, you're thinking, gosh, maybe I should have prepared better. or Maybe I should have done this more. Maybe we should have done this less or whatever the case is. And you're just taking full responsibility. And that's what the greatest leaders do. And Coach Sterling, I want to ask you, in terms of team bonding, what kind of activities do you guys do off field? Well, Coach, um, for, for my program, I always make sure that we have at least a service project once a month. And, and people say, wow, Coach, but you have a game every single week. I make time for them to serve the community, um, to get out there because you know, with, within my, my religion, you know, as a bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I, when you're in a service of your fellow man, you're in a service of your God. And so it allows them to think more about others rather than themselves. And so to build that, that team bonding, to build that oneness and appreciation for everything that they have, we go out and serve at least once a month. 
I like that you're making time to do that. I mean, everybody has time. So many people say that they're so busy, but you know, I mean, busy is relative. I mean, I know a lot of busy people that that are very productive. So I like that you're you're making time to do that with your team. And I want to ask you about this, Coach Sterling. I always say that performance goals directly influence results. What kind of performance goals do you focus on with your team? Well, with, with our team, our performance goals, Coach, is, you know, first and foremost is, is staying disciplined, which is minimizing our penalties because that is something that we can control, right? Going off sides, watching the ball, staying on count, listening to the cadence. So that's one of the biggest performance goals because it's something that we have control over, right? And, you know, defensively, we're always preaching a shutout. Offensively, we're looking to score seven touchdowns. We want to make sure that, like I said earlier, we're playing to our potential. And that is our potential to take care of the things that we can and execute and perform the things that we have been doing at practice. I'm glad you said that because, yeah, it's it's a huge thing to only focus on things that are within our control and mm -hmm. not really worry about things beyond our control. And you brought up self-discipline. I, I always think that self-discipline is probably the biggest key because self-discipline leads to habits, which leads to success. And I always would tell my players that self-discipline is doing the right thing regardless of how you feel, whether you feel like it or not, doing the right thing all the time. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with that, Coach. Um, it's exactly what we preach as well, you know, consistently being able to do the right thing. And, and one of the things I, I tell my players is anybody can come in and play Friday night or they can come to one of our practice, lift and run. But can they do it consistently to the duration of the season? Are they willing to get up at seven in the morning on a Saturday and come out and work out? Are they willing to stay three hours with filming, lifting, and practice week in and week out? Are they able to wake up in the morning and go to your early morning seminaries, go to school, and, and do your whole day that's full, right? So self-discipline also requires consistency to make sure you're not just a superior, I mean, a, a great team, but a superior team, as you mentioned in your book, right? That superior culture you want to be able to get to. Yeah, I always say there's a big difference between a culture of excellence and a superior culture of excellence. And, and that's what you're about. And that's what I love about you, Coach Sterling. And I want to ask you, what's, what's a big challenge that you're dealing with as coach? You know, a big challenge is the, the parents, the community at times that, you know, we know we have a great team, right? Unfortunately, only 11 can play at a time, right? But every, every player and every parent wants their, you know, son to be playing. And so that's a challenge in which my coaches and I, we are aware of. And as much as possible, we want everyone to get into the game, everyone to perform to their best. And so the challenge is trying to get everyone equal amount of sharing time and getting film, getting recognized, um, because everybody is putting in the work every single day. So we want to make sure that we're able to reward them for their hard work. No, that's that's uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And you know, for me, I I wouldn't just coach my players. I would actually be coaching my players' parents as well, so that they know what we're doing. And I would also tell, tell the parents that I'm not going to protect your child from a challenge. I'm going to teach them how to face it. And I need you to help reinforce uh, what we're working on to really help your child deal with not just tennis and the, the competition, but really about life's challenges. What are your thoughts about that? I totally agree, Coach. You know, um, the other year, unfortunately, we had three coaches on my staff passed away, right? So that, that was a real challenge um, for us as a team 
a challenge that didn't happen on the football field, but a challenge that happened off the football field. So helping our players understand that there is more to life than just football. And exactly how you say, we're not protecting them from life and its challenges because they will come. And a lot of our coaches who passed away were father figures to a lot of my players. And so being able to see the perspective of life outside of football helped us to get closer last year. And that was one of the biggest reasons for our success is the chemistry and the closeness of our teams in pulling together to these adversities and tragedies. These adversities and tragedies brought us closer together. And because of that, we were more successful. If you look at our OIA championship game last year, within three plays, we were down 14 nothing to Mililani on a wet, cold night at Lelehoa High School. But the good thing about that coach is none of my players nor my coaches started to complain or bicker or point the finger. Rather, defensive players was coming over and says, coach, whatever you need us to do on offense. My defensive coaches, offensive coaches were in communication in what they seen and how we can attack certain things. And eventually we came back and had 21 unanswered points and ended up winning the game and won the OA championship. But that, that's what we want to do is build the character of our players so that when adversity does happen, we're not pointing the fingers, but rather looking within ourselves and saying, what can we do to help? What can we do to make this situation better? And that was one of the biggest things that happened to us last year and brought our success. No, and I like that you said that, and, and it's about your mindset. I mean, you're coaching your players and, and your assistant coaches are coaching them to have the right mindset and to choose the better choices like staying positive and really maybe just focusing on the next play, right? And coach, mm -hmm. I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. What gives you fulfillment? Well, coach, to be honest, it, it's my wife and my family. Um, I'm only as successful because of my wife who does everything that everyone doesn't see, right? They see me coaching, they see me within the community, but they don't realize is my wife back home is taking care of our three daughters, right? Taking care of the house, taking care of the bills and everything else that comes in running a family. Um, I'm successful because I'm able to have a peace of mind that everything else back home is taken care of because of my wife and the support that she gives. So my fulfillment comes from my family, right? My family, my mom, my, my brothers and my sisters and their support. And so once I know that I have their support and they allow me to do what I do, I can be able to focus and do the things that I do even better. Well, I'm glad you said that. I mean, they go, I mean, they're behind the scenes and, and it's so important to, for them to do what they do to allow you to do what you do in terms of your coaching. And, and Coach Sterling, I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. I mean, I, I want our entire state of Hawaii to be proud of you and your entire Kahuku football team. Well, thank you, Coach, for having me here. Um, I'm just, like I said, very grateful to be surrounded by great coaches um, on my staff. And I appreciate their hard work because they work individually with our players every day. And collectively, as a staff, we're able to put together a championship team. But I'm also grateful for the families who trust us with their players um, to allow us to do service within the community to teach them the correct principles on and off the field. And also just shout out to my players. Um, I'm grateful that they're very respectful and great young men. And so I'm very fortunate coach, like I said, to have me on this show and be able to talk about our program. I appreciate it. Thanks coach Sterling. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Coach Sterling and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.